Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with part 3 of the End of Death canon, also known as Omega K. If you enjoy the a, um, video, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Twenty twenty, September twelfth, fourteen o two. That's two o two p.m. By the way. Um, Mrs. Michaels. Yes. I believe the doctor would like to, um, show you something. Joyce Michaels' father was sat up in his hospital bed for the first time in months. The heartbeat met on the next to his bed, cried a steady tone. It had been disconnected. Who are you? the man asked. He was finally awake, though perhaps not lucid. Roy turned to the nurse. What happened? The nurse fumbled with his <laughs> with his words. We shut off the life support just now. Seven oh two. That's 1402 GMT. It didn't, nothing changed. Joyce's lungs burned. Her heart fell out slow. This can't be real. 7.32, half an hour later. Joyce was in the hospital lobby. The doctors had told her to go wait while they worked out what had happened. A television in the corner of the... The room was tuned to the news. It wasn't just her dad, it was everyone. In the past half hour, life had continued, uninterrupted by death, for the first time in forever. No one had died, not even animals. The camera was focused on some boy who'd slapped a mosquito on his arm. Amongst its remains, what was left of it still right, trying to fly away. The presenter was smiling. A miracle, she called it. Joyce couldn't manage a smile. The only thing on her mind was the amount of work that lay ahead. 2020, September 13th. Hey, Joyce. She quickly finished typing up her message and hit send before looking up to see who had come into her office. She smiled when, and she saw it was Daryl Lloyd. A researcher whom she'd worked previous is Louis. Hey Daryl, what brings you down here? I just got assigned to a new project and wanted to come say a goodbye. Well, you have to. I just sent an email to site the director asking for a transfer, actually. Can I see it? Sure. To site director Fletcher from Dr. Joyce Michaels. Subject, Omega K research request. Hi, Tom. I'd like to request to be on the team researching Omega K. Not only is it in my field, but it's very much a personal matter to me. I've worked with the analytic teams, analytical teams for SCP-2679 and SCP-3138, both of which required me to determine the cause of death for anomalous corpse purposes. While I'm more than aware that Omega K won't involve any dead bodies, I felt ill that being part of the research team is something that fits my expertise very well. Many thanks, Joyce. No spelling mistakes. Nice, Daryl commented, his head hovering up over Joyce's shoulder as he scanned the text. Are you sure you know him well enough to call him Tom? I think you should go a little more formal. Joyce dismissed the notion with a wave of her hand. It's fine. We've spoken at least... Three times. I've said it now anyway. Daryl sighed in mock exasperation. You're too late, by the way. Emily Young's already claimed the project. It's number S it's numbered SCP thirty nine eighty four. You couldn't have told me that already? 
And not my fault you couldn't wait to send the email. Fair enough. How did she get so quickly anyway? Seemed like she claimed it literally minutes after it happened. Don't ask me how she managed it. Joy shrugged. I guess she does work fast. How do you know this stuff anyway? I'm on her research team. Well, come on now, that's not fair. Do you think you can get me a place? Harold laughed gently. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can. She was keen on having a very small team. Shame. Look, I actually have to head to a meeting in a few minutes, so I don't really have time to chat. You know, Daryl began, his voice trailing off. Joyce looked up at him. A moment, a long moment passed. What? It's funny how it's a rapture. My parents are still mowing their lawn like it's ending at our Sunday. Rapture? Who's calling it the rapture? I think some hippies on new oh, sorry it's raising internet is for the growing population or something. It's right over the internet. Right. Sorry, what was your point? <sighs> I just find it funny how this is a K class scenario and all, but the mundane the ages day stuff just carries on. Joyce laughed gently. Just enough to tell Jer Errol that she did not like this joke, but didn't find it funny. He smiled, grabbed his knuckle twice against her office door, and closed it behind him on his way out. She checked her email again. Two new no messages. One to her work address, one to her personal address. To Joyce Michaels from Site Director Fletcher. Re Omega K A research request. Dr. Michaels. Omega K is a, a personal matter for everyone in the in the foundation. It's a personal matter for everyone in the world, no less. That being said, the reason I can't allow you to research Omega K is because it's already been claimed. Dr. Emily a young has taken the project and picked her own staff to assist her. A skeleton crew, I might add. I suggest you passing your requests to her. I should mention that she's made very clear that the purpose of research into Omega K should be to discover its limits, it's not its origin. I'm inclined to agree. I recommend you do something more useful with your time. The bugs should be a huge problem. And by now. Perhaps you can find out why they're not. Hoping you're well. Oh, that's just a future part. We'll read that later on. Site Director Thomas Fletcher. To JoyceMichael79 at gmail.com. From administrative at newstarthospital.org Subject regarding upcoming discharge Dear Joyce, on account of budget constraints and increasing hospital members, the New Start Hospital regrets to inform you that your relative, George Michaels, will be discharged from the hospital on the 15th. As Mr. Mark Michaels is no longer in a terminal condition, we trust that this news will only bear a minor inconvenience. Be sure to let one of our staff know if you need assistance transporting Mr. Michaels to your home. Regards, New Start Hospital. Twenty twenty two, April seventeenth. A long then as Elio of them of spittle dropped gently from her father's mouth. Joyce took a piece of tissue and dabbed it away. His eyes seeing but probably not understanding, were fixed on the television screen. The television showed, in silence, the in inauguration of uh, Jonathan Nar Arsemis as President of the United States.
election had been a landslide. Our same as as manifesto was neither left wing nor, nor right wing. He simply had a solution, which is what everyone had wanted to hear. Seems kind of impossible to have a solution in this situation. Unless they just mean that politically, which I won't get into. Three sharp knocks on the front door woke Joyce from her mental haze. Her eyes drifted hazily from the television, which was turned on but muted to the door. She rose from her seat and made her way over to the source of the noise. She took a quick look through the people and saw someone she faintly recognized from years ago. A face she could barely remember and certainly didn't know by name. <sighs> she opened the door and someone dressed in the green uniform of Sa El Cheyenne Point, an assisted living facility a few hours drive away. As were telling me, Joyce's brother worked. To be relieved that the foundation told people who didn't need to know better. Joyce knew the truth, of course. But the fresh-faced twenty-something who was stood at the door clearly had a script to deliver. I'm real sorry, Miss Michaels, he began. I had to t it would be the one to tell you about it. Anthony's dead. He passed away peacefully. How old's that script, kid? Joyce asked. Tired eyes pouring down into him. No one's died for a year and a half. He stuttered, fumbled on his words. He didn't have a backup plan. I haven't had to do this in quite a while. Sorry, ma'am. You're a foundation, right? Not civilian? Yes, ma'am. You know that I'm also a foundation? No, ma'am, but I do now. Then you should know that I know my brother's been dead for quite a while. I'm real sorry, you hey, ma'am, the boy mumbled. He was doing his best. I I guess it's better than finding out now. A quick glare silenced him. It's not. I'm sorry, when did he die? If you don't mind me asking. Ten days before everything went to... F oh, oh, crap. Ten freaking days. If he, he'd have taken a holiday or something, he'd be alive today. I'm sorry for your loss. You know? Joyce continued. Now she started talking. She couldn't stop. I was told he was a good man. A great agent. One of the best. I was told he saved countless lives. But they never told me how. Joyce stepped to the side. Letting the boy look into the room. Letting him see the silent television and the elderly man who sat at opposite to it. Watching intently. Probably not even aware that he couldn't hear anything. That's my dad, she continued. I look after him these days. He's supposed to be dead, hospitalized for months. He was going to die that very day, you know. He kept his life, just like everyone else, but his memory is long gone. Tears began to form slowly in her eyes as she blinked rapidly to force him back. She was grateful that she was facing away from the boy that he didn't see. She turned back to him. One survived, but lost his mind. The other died. It's driven the other way round. But life doesn't work out the way you want it to, huh? So how come um, my brothers died again? The boy said he didn't have a response for this. It was supposed to be a quick visit. I'm sorry, ma'am. It must have been a mistake. I'll, I'll, you know, we can maybe do something about your father. Look after him for you. That way you can maybe come back, even come back to the foundation. Have a little more time on your hands. I'll think about it, Joyce said. And then she gently shut the, a door over the boy's face. She took a seat next to her father. 
And he asked who the boy was, but she didn't answer. She went and remember asking by the time she had finished speaking. <sighs> Joy sat at her desk, complying the report she had been asked to make, a list of anomalies, both in containment and otherwise, and any changes that occurred to them as a result of Omega K. She stared at the list, her five most recent entries, the ones she'd finished today, uh, staring back. So we have SCP, post mega K behavior, and post mega K classification. SCP-1440 SCP-1440 entered the nearby town and dwelled there for a week without causing anomalously formed a disaster. The Foundation for C is to capture SP-1440 for containment at a nearby site. Post Mega K classification, Euclid, heading for further reclassification as, U as neutralized. I'm guessing 1440 usually it used to um, cause uh, large, large disasters. We might look into that a, a, a later on. SCP-2935 The Foundation is no longer able to access SCP-2935. Its entrance now leads to a non-anomalous tunnel system. Its classification has been and, and reassigned to neutralize. SCP-2718 System bug making entry inaccessible is now gone. The entry was as empty, probably unrelated. Reassigned. Declassified anomaly A8315. A315 no longer displays anomalous properties. Neutralize. SCP-2339 Population and number has continued to increase into the millions, now capable of simulating upwards of 20 symphonies simultaneously. It's now Euclid. Three sharp knocks on her office door diverted her attention from her work. Come in, she called. The door opened and Daryl O'Lloyd burst inside. He looked a little disheveled, his hair not quite in place, a little red in the cheeks. <sighs> Joyce, he began, slightly breathless. Young just tried to kill herself. I know you've worked with her previously. I just, I just wanted to let you know. Emily Young? Emily, yeah. Joyce closed the document she'd been working on and rose a hand to at least scratch the side of her neck. Weren't you both working with Ed 3984 directly? She asked. We were. You'd have thought uh, that she of all people would uh, know the consequences. What's her current condition? I got here as fast as, as I could. She's being taken to medical right now. If I had to give a prognosis, I'd say brain damage at the very least. How bad? Bad. Joyce pressed both hands to her face without a long, quiet moan. If the arrow heard, he didn't comment. <sighs> a long moment passed. Daryl broke the silence. I'm sorry, Joyce, he began. Were you too close? Joyce lowered her hands from her face. She took a striped breath in and exhaled it slowly. <sighs> no, my brother worked with her though. They're all nodded. He understood. Can you let someone know that I'll be taking over her 3984? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I want to originally, remember? I'll write up the post and report and everything. Just leave it to me. I want to see Emily first though. 
Darrell shook his head sympathetically. Of course, I'll take you there now. 2030, October 3rd. Hi, is this the droid? <laughs> Sorry. Hi, is this the home of a Miss Joyce Michaels? The woman at the door had and hair dyed a deep purple, made into curls that bounced around her shoulders. Her smile, painted a bit right red, was big and felt genuine. Yeah, that's me. Good to meet you. My name is Emma Preston. I'm working with the Societal Census Program, and I'm here to ask you a few questions. Can you spare 15 minutes? Oh, I've heard... I heard about you guys. Did you find... Didn't you find something weird happening in Florida or something? The woman shrugged, a wry smile on her face. I'm smart. I'm sorry. I wouldn't know about that. I just asked the questions. Do you mind if I come inside? With no excuse readily available, Joyce waved her inside. The Preston. Preston curtsied and led herself into the lounge. The two sat on either end of the long on couch. You are Joyce Michaels? I am. Can I have your age and gender? I'm 51 and I'm female, but I'm hoping you knew that. Preston laughed gently. Hey, I'm not going to judge. <sighs> May I ask if you have any living immediate family? Uh, sure. Joyce took a moment to think. I saw Preston was already writing even though she hadn't said anything yet. My dad, George, is 83. He lives in an assisted living complex. My brother Eric is 48. They all know where he's living at the moment. Have you visited your dad recently? I, uh, that's a little personal? No, not, not recently. Preston looked up from her notepad. I'm sorry, is that everyone? That's everyone. Thank you, Joyce. May I ask if you're expecting a child or if anyone you know? Or if you know anyone who is? I'm not, and I don't. I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to these days. Preston nodded. You are, but only if the pregnancy is registered, which you have to declare a few weeks in advance, and then they can deny it. I think it's hideous, personally, but it's law. Sorry for asking. This is what the census is for, after all. Sure it is. That's no problem. Flame Narcissus. Of course. May I ask about any lifestyle changes you've had since the rapture? The rapture? Oh, you mean the Mega K? Crescent opened her, her head to the side slightly. Her hair are swinging to match. I mean, since people stopped dying. Yeah, that. Uh, I guess a lot. But really, what kind of information are you looking for? Preston smiled. As much as you're okay with sharing. For example, have your living arrangements changed at all? Yeah, sure. I quit my job a few years back to take care of my, my dad, who would have otherwise, you know. Eventually, he got moved into assisted living, and I was given my old job back. I still work there. Huh. I guess my arrangements haven't changed at all. Where do you work? Out of interest. At the minute, just general admin for the foundation. I used to have a more hands-on role, but it got too much. I stepped down from... from that a few months ago. The foundation? You know, the, uh... It occurred to Joyce that Emma Preston might not know what the foundation was, despite being employed by one of its fronts. Joyce had been talking to a civilian this whole time. The, uh, man a charitable foundation. Where we're a charity. Of course, my apologies. Would you say your organization's work has changed much since the rapture? It's... Joyce never worked with the man a charitable foundation. And I had no clue what they really did. She decided to wing it. 
it's gotten a lot harder. To take care of their homeless is already difficult enough, and in recent years, so many more people are forced to live that life. We've been doing our best to take care of as many as we can. I don't keep doing so, but it's hard, you know? Every day when I walk up into work, I can feel the weight of those people who depend on me, who depend on us. And I feel like this is my place in the world. This is where I belong. I'm just grateful that so many people are so happy to donate their money to us, to help however they can. As she spoke, her bullshit was punctuated. <laughs> Excuse me. As she spoke, her, her BS was punctuated by Preston's perfectly timed expressions of sympathy and approval. Joyce sighed. She'd have to make a phone call to get her census entry expunged. You mentioned you used to have a more hands on role? In the soup kitchen, I burned my hands, so I don't work there anymore. Preston nodded solemnly and began to stand up. Well, thank you for your time, Miss Michaels. I have more than enough to be working with, and a good and many other people to get to with today. That's no problem. Have a nice evening, Miss Preston. You too, Miss Michaels. Make sure you visit your dad soon. Twenty thirty-three, January first. Hey, Dad? Hello? Have we met? It was the same conversation. Every time they saw each other. Every time. It was torture. In some ways, though it was a blessing. It had been over a year since Joyce had visited her father, and her guilt was suppressed by knowledge that he didn't even I don't remember who she was. I have a New Year's present for you. She held out a small box, one that had once held a wedding ring, the same box I had given to Joyce's mother so many years ago. She'd found it by pure chance a few months ago. She was hoping that he'd remember it, that feeling its blue velvet covered would bring something back. The best she could hope for was a fond deer in his eye. Her dad might not. I don't even remember what New Year's is, but he knew what a gift was. He took the go he took the box slowly. His hands, weak and covered with dark veins, shook gently as he struggled to open it. Dryce reached forward and opened it for him. The box opened slowly, its internal spring trying to hold itself closed until it popped open with a muffled click. Inside was a single... Oh, pill. What's this? He barked, his voice gruff and coarse. It's medicine, she told him. It'll make the pain go away. I'm not in any pain. I am. It'll stop you from forgetting things. I haven't forgotten anything. Dad, you don't even know who I am. Of course I do, he said. And for the first time since Joyce had arrived, he looked up and made eye contact with her. Joyce had forgotten. And what that felt like. Her dad's gaze, sharp and intelligent, pouring down into her. He smiled, not with his, his mouth, but with the friendly wrinkles around his eyes. It all came flooding back. All the precious memories she'd hid away and he locked up tight. How he taught her, her to cook. All those long cycling trips. The conversations they'd had together. It was like her dad was back and for a moment she dared to hope that he finally remembered his daughter. You're my nurse. Finish. Of course, her dad was long gone. Joyce looked down at the pill in the ring box. She was putting her job on the line to bring her father some peace.
Perhaps if you understood just what this was, how hard it had been for Joyce to get. <sighs> you know, Dad, she began. This pill was very hard to find. It's made by a company called Marshall, Carter, and Dark. They call this little pill hypnotrilene. It's very expensive. Far more expensive than I could ever hope to afford. She moved a little closer. Her father's eyes watching intently. I actually stole this. We, the foundation, that's where I work. It's up to the shipment of hundreds of these pills, and by pure luck, I managed to steal one just for you. She moved her father's hand onto the pill, key not to touch it herself, just in case. It's really important that y you... I want you to take this, Dad. It's for your own good. She didn't tell him the pill was the result was the result of a collaboration between MC and D and Frenzy's laboratories. As far as the foundation could tell, on um, the two corporations had re had re swapped research as. Uh, and when it was profitable for both. There was no telling in what Prometheus Labs had gotten out of the deal, as only the MC and D had a frog to show for it. Rather for that if her father knew all this, then he'd take the pill. Perhaps if he knew it was a sleeping pill that put you just into a sleep so deep you'd never wake up, he'd take it. He didn't, and Joyce was no monster. Twenty forty four, February twenty first. You are old, you are sick, perhaps you're simply tired, tired of life. But we all know that there's no end in sight. But who needs an end? When we can have a fresh beginning, why be you when you can be new? Prometheus Laboratories, make the change today. <sighs> the advertisement had finished 10 minutes ago, but its message still echoed in Joyce's mind. Prometheus Labs were literally offering the ability to swap your entire body with another, and somehow not a single person in the Foundation had been aware of it before the official announcement. Montan Montauk had proved to be something of a distraction. Joyce had been tasked with writing the report of what Prometheus is were doing and how they managed to fly beneath the radar for so long. Her work was slow, though. Not only was there very limited information into research, most of which came directly from Prometheus advertising, but she was concerned that it was too late, and by the time they had any semblance of a plan to oppose the company, people would already be flocking to get their surgery done. Before long, the news might even reveal that surgery actually worked, and by then, it would be way out of the Foundation's hands. Three sharp knocks on her office door diverted her attention. Come in, she called. The door opened, and Ardell Rogers, captain of one of the site security teams, Doris couldn't remember, couldn't remember which one exactly, partially stepped into the room. Dr. Michaels, sorry to disturb you, but an interrogee is requesting your presence. An interrogee? Yes, ma'am. We found her trying to access a classified document. The file for 3984, in fact. I haven't touched that in... I haven't touched that for years. No one has. Why would you want that? 
We don't know, ma'am. We're hoping she'll be a little more open if she's allowed to talk to you. Joyce nodded. Very well, take me to her. She wasn't being kept in squalor, with each wrist strung to a wall and blood dripping from her mouth from being beaten by the guards. Instead, she was sat in a, in a chair, handcuffed to the metal ring on the left side of the table. She looked fairly healthy, if you ignored the scars around her, her neck and the red stain on her shirt. Her head was bowed slightly, but she kept strict eye contact as Joyce entered the interrogation chamber. She took a seat on the opposite side of the table. Neither said a word for for a long, long moment. She smiled, her eyes wide and empty. You're looking old. I was told that you attempted to access the documentation for SB3984. I did. And that you specifically requested my presence. I did. Why? The woman leaned forward a little. Do you remember me? No. It has... it's been a long time. Sixteen years? You're older than sixteen. I could see you being fifty. Sixteen years since you stitched my head back onto my... my body. It all came back. During 1984, every D-class who Young got her hands on. The fate that befell them, they were all still alive. One had come back. She beheaded you. His smile grew wider. You remember me! I'm sorry, Troy sorry. Her words came back to her. Her words that she'd been planning to say to her but had never been given the chance. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Eight years in a freezer. I... I'm... She nodded, but too quickly. It was more like a nervous tick. It changes you, but you survive. The 11,424. That was your designation. What was your, your name? A look of confusion passed over her face. She didn't like the word, or perhaps the answer, but it was gone in an instant. It doesn't matter. Oh, numbers never die. Hmm. I'm going to add that to a bookmark. Why did you want to talk to me specifically? Young was trying to hide something. I knew it. I know it. I found the evidence. <sighs> of course she was trying to hide something. She killed handfuls of D-Class. Real living people who had to take the torture she inflicted and carry with them forever. If you've read the file, you know as well as me that she tried to... Do you know what Project Egdon Rung is, Doctor? What? Project Demerung. Does it ring a bell? Joyce thought back. The word did ring a bell, though she couldn't remember where from. I don't recognize the name. It existed. I know it. There is a link. A link to it in SCP-3984. A reference, but I can't get through it. I was the lead researcher for 3984 for years. I would know if there was something like that there. Of course you wouldn't be able to see it. It was buried, hidden, deep beneath. Level 5 axes only. Young. Young put it there. She, poked, she spoke too quickly. Spit foaming around her mouth. 
She re is her uh, right, her free right hand up to wipe it away. Joyce knew that she could be right. If there were such a link, it was very possible that it could have been hidden from her. Joyce turned to her with the door. I think we're done here. No! No! She cried, stretching forward with her free hand. Panicked eyes staring up at Joyce. Tell me then, Doctor. Tell me why research into Omega K was as forbidden. Because there's no point. There was no point in any of the tests we did for 3984. A guard's voice... I just echoed through the door, barking some command. Promise you'll look into it. No. I will. The door swung open and Joyce was pushed aside. A guard grabbed the old, old D 11424 and forced her, her into her seat. Another grabbed Joyce more gently and led her outside the chamber. The door swung shut behind her with a metallic clang. Arda O'Rogers placed his hand on Joyce's shoulder. I'm sorry you had to go through that, ma'am. Forget what she said. We'll take care of her. It's no problem, Joyce replied, but her voice was distant. D11424 could be right. Before she could look into that, though, she had a report on Prometheus Labs to finish. Whew. <sighs> This has been uh, and how good it been, and I and that was uh, was the SCP can and then for the end of that part three Omega K. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time.